Hey guys, how is everyone doing today? It is Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Yes, I believe. Man, second Monday of June. This is crazy. The year is getting close to an end. Well, not really. It just feels like it. Sorry, I got distracted. I've got like my family uh, thread on Facebook popping up and people talking. <laughs> So I got distracted. Hello, brothers and sister. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing really, really well today on Monday. <laughs> I am really stoked to be here. Missed a couple weeks ago because we had the holiday. Hey, Mike. How you doing, man? It is good to see your smiling picture of a face. <laughs> yeah, we had the break, and then Roland had one last week, and oh, it was so good. So, so good. Oh, my. There he is. Howdy, Harry one. Hi. <laughs> Hey, Rick. Hey, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Tyler. Dude, this is oh, this is like a family reunion. Yes! Oh, man. So we'll wait a couple minutes as we're waiting for people to get on. But uh, uh, it has just been quite a roller coaster ride of now going on our almost third month, or completing our third month of all of this. That's a quarter of a year. Quarter of a year, I hope that uh, this has really led for all of us, I know it has for me, a lot of appreciation of just the ability to get together and pray with one another, face to face, right? Arms around each other, not taking that for granted anymore. I do not ever want to take that for granted again. I know a lot of other Christians and believers in, in persecuted countries have that, where they, uh, they don't have that freedom. And for us, it seems crazy to not have that. And yet here we are. So, man, when we get back together, Lord willing, it is going to be <laughs> an awesome, awesome time. All right. Hey, Jeremy. Good to see you, brother. Hey, Josh. And Christy. And Kathy. Yes. Whole bunch of folks. Hey, Mom. Hola. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. This is going to be fun. So, today... We're going to be talking about a passage from the Old Testament. Now, I know, a lot of times some people, believers, hear the Old Testament and go, Ugh. But, um, man, Paul wrote in Romans, he says, You know, whatever was written in the Old Testament scriptures was written for our benefit. And we would be really, really wise to pay attention to them. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, hey, Antoinette. I'm so bummed you're moving. That just, uh don't get me started. Okay. So what we're going to do is, this is unique. So I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory. A year ago, I took a Facebook sabbatical. So I broke my ankle, shattered it. Long story, if you've seen pictures, all that. And then I, the day after surgery, I posted this super positive uh, post. Like, I can't wait to see what God's going to teach me and all this sort of stuff. Well, my nerve block was still on and I couldn't feel a thing. And uh, the result of that, um, when it wore off about 48 days later, I wasn't really on Facebook for four months because I didn't have a nice thing to say, in all honesty. So I, I ended up not really doing hardly anything on Facebook for a whole year and I really didn't miss it, actually. But a lot of people at church, man, did you see what so-and-so posted or what they posted? So I'm like, okay, this year, excuse me, I'll get back on Facebook. So I got back on Facebook about the beginning of March. Not the best timing. Not the best timing at all. Man, COVID-19, then Killer Hornets, then oh, the murder of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd, and then protests and riots and looting. Oh my, you know, it was, it was not the best timing on my part. Um, so it, that has been a unique journey for the last year. And... For those of you who are on Facebook, which all of you watching are, like, social media is a great place to have an open discussion and dialogue, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Your incessant barrage of inflammatory and, and antagonistic posts has caused me to change my opinion, said no one ever. So <laughs> with, with all of that, it's just, man, I find myself, I can't look at this anymore. This is just too much. It's sensory overload. So we've got all this madness going on in the United States. What should we, as followers of Jesus, do? Or more 
or rather, I guess you could say, how should we be? How should we be in all this? So that is where we're going to go to the Old Testament in the book of Micah. Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and... Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. There's a lot of backstory on Micah. When he was getting words from the Lord to share with people, and that is one of your homework assignments to go look that up. But uh, it's right after the book of Jonah, if you want to go look for it. So I'm just going to start reading Micah 6, 6 through 8, and this is from the International Standard Version. It says, How am I to present myself in the Lord's presence and to bow in the presence of the high God? Should I present myself with burnt offerings or with year old calves? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or endless rivers of oil? Am I am I to give my firstborn to pay for my rebellion or the you know like the fruit of my body in exchange for my soul? And so Mike is just using what's called hyperbole. He's just ramping up all the examples to the point of extreme exaggeration. But here's how he concludes it in verse eight: He, God. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So take all your sacrifices. Here's what I want. Well, let's look at this a little bit. We're just going to unpack this little passage. That's it. What's justice? If we're going to go in and start, you know, dissecting this, we need to define some terms. So what's justice? Justice. I looked it up in Webster's, and it is the, the administration of law in an impartial and fair manner. Okay, makes sense. Justice is blind. You've seen the uh, scales of Lady Justice with the blindfold on. It's impartial. What's well, mercy? According to Webster's, it's compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's right and power to punish. So mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom within it's your right and power to punish that person. So here's the question. Here's the quandary. How can justice and mercy coexist? If you act mercifully, that is like if, if you don't punish someone fairly for the wrong they've done, then haven't you just annulled justice? So Christians and Jews claim that, that God is both merciful and that he's just. But how can both of these be true? Doesn't mercy cancel justice? Or does justice annul or make mercy impossible? I don't know if you've ever thought of this, but um, a lot of people who argue against Christianity and all do. And Peter tells us that as, our, as believers, in 1 Peter, it is our duty to always have an answer ready to explain the hope that's within us. So let's unpack this. Are justice and mercy incompatible? No. Here's why. God acts mercifully, not by going against his justice, but by doing something more than justice. I'm going to say that again. God acts mercifully, not by going against his justice, but instead by doing something more than justice demands. Let me explain. If I forgive a crime committed against me, I am actually giving the offender of that crime a gift. That gift is the exchange of mercy for justice. So in the word forgive, we have the word give, okay? And we also have the word for, which means in advance of something. Well, in it's a gift in advance of something. Well, in advance of what? before justice is administered. Forgiveness is far from an attitude or a feeling. It is a gift. 
it's it's the remitting or the canceling the canceling of a debt and the person who pays the price for that gift is not the offender but the giver so do you need a word picture for this I'm sure we can all think of one God's forgiveness of human sin at Golgotha it costs God a lot more than we will ever understand and both justice and mercy were unified there they existed in cohabitation see justice can be apathetic it requires no emotion to be fulfilled but mercy requires the emotional and conscious choice of goodwill it requires love so let's look now at a little more of the wordsmithing that God gave Micah in this passage. Let's look at Micah 6, verse 8 again. What has God desired, O oh man, to act justly? Act. It's an action. Justice can be an action. It can be impartial. It can be almost mechanical. But to love mercy. Mercy is not an action. It's not impartial. Mercy is a desire. So in James 2, verses 12 and 13, 13, for James 2, 12 through 13, we get this kind of expanded perspective on this from the perspective of a New Testament follower of the Messiah. James says, you must make it your habit to speak and act like people who are going to be judged by the law of liberty of freedom for the one who has shown no mercy will be judged without mercy but mercy triumphs over judgment let's paraphrase that in another like we'd see in the amplified mercy triumphs over justice so you say you want justice I want justice no, you don't. No, you don't. Justice is impartial. If you if you really want justice for those who wronged you, then you have to be ready to accept justice for everything you've done is wrong as well. Right? Everyone wants justice for that guy, but mercy for me. No, no. To be truly merciful is not to contradict justice. To be really merciful is to fulfill justice. Nothing better illustrates this concept than what God did on the cross for humanity. So how do we do this? How can we make this part of us? How can this come out of us in a way that goes beyond our human nature, which leaves something to be desired, let's be honest, right? The answer is right there in the last lines of verse 8. To walk humbly with your God. Here's how the Amplified Bible translates it. And to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. When you realize how much you've been forgiven of, it's a lot easier to forgive others. When you begin to understand just how merciful God's been to you, it actually becomes natural to be merciful to others. And walking, walking with your God is not a one-time event. It is a lifelong journey spent beside the God of justice spent beside the God of mercy, learning more of the God that He is and the God that we are not. As born-again followers of Jesus, the more we walk with Him, the more His nature will become our nature. It will become supernatural, beyond what we can do on our own. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. 
That's what he wants. And that is the start. And it goes from there. That's it, guys. That is the devotional for today. So I encourage you. I encourage you. Flip back to the Old Testament. Look up the book of Micah. And go through Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. And process that. And ask the Lord, as you're walking with Him, to make His nature your nature. To make His heart your heart. And that the love that is for, that pours out of His Spirit, which is sealed in you, will pour out on others. That's it, guys. Uh, all right, so you know what? We got a couple minutes. Let's do prayer requests if y'all got them. If you don't have them, that'd be fantastic. Awesome. If you have a praise, like something you're really excited about, something cool that God has done, please share that too. We don't want to be all just like, man, the whole time. We want to hear the victories, man. So as people are typing those in, because there's, as you guys are typing it in, because there is a slight delay from when you type it to when I see it. Um... Here's a little bit of perspective I was talking about with a, a really, really good friend of mine over the weekend. And it's a perspective as we look at everything that's going on in the news and on social media. As followers of Jesus, this, all around us right now in this world, this is the closest to hell we are ever going to see. This is the closest to hell we will ever see. This is not heaven. This isn't heaven, guys. And to try to think that it can be is ridiculous. This isn't heaven. Now, we can have the kingdom of God here in us, but this is not perfection. This is not Eden. We are still surrounded by sin. We're surrounded by all the schmutz of people who don't know him. This isn't heaven, guys. But this is the closest to hell we're ever going to see. Now think about the people around us that we know and that we love and we care about who don't know the Lord. This is the closest to heaven they're ever going to see. This is the closest to heaven, yeah. This is the closest to heaven they are ever going to see. This is as good as it gets. When you realize that it's a lot easier to have mercy on them because they don't know any better for what that's worth. This is the closest to hell we're ever going to see. Alright! Prayers and praise! Prayer Rick Bell, pray for our law enforcement. I agree. And uh, pray for the people out on the streets too. Seriously, pray for both. Uh, hey, Sue, that's really sweet of you. How can you specifically pray for me? Wow, I got to process that one. Um, <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> Antoinette, I have a second interview with the company tomorrow. Woo, that's fantastic. Uh, pray to get rid of the evil that's going on right now. Wish that was possible best way to start that is to pray for people to come to know Jesus who don't. Uh, <laughs> love you, Jeremy. I'm glad, man. That was a, that was a great evening. Uh, okay. Please pray for those who are upset, worried, and need of the good news. Well, if you don't have the good news, you're going to be upset and worried. Makes sense. Good reasoning. All right, guys. Well, we got a few. I hope that wasn't too loud in your ears. Let's bow our hearts, guys, and let's talk to the Father. Ah, okay. God, there are a lot of members of C3 and people who attend here who partner together for you, for you here sharing the good news that are law enforcement. We have a lot of members of the law enforcement and first responder community that go here to our church, and we have a lot of people that go to this church that are outside with signs uh, protesting in the way that they are protected to do so. And I ask that you protect all of them. 
every one of them, Father. Keep them safe in your hands. Every one of them is made in your image. Every one of them is made in your image. Please keep your people safe. Now there is, going through the list as I cheat and I look, for those who are upset, worried, and need the good news. Dad, and yes, we've seen some uh, wonderful, wonderful things in the news that, well, not in the news, but at least in Facebook and a couple of places where protesters and, and law enforcement get together and pray. And they're putting arms around each other. They're praying for one another. They're blessing each other. That's what we need more of. Thank you for those remarkable examples of what it is to be a disciple and a follower of Jesus in this world. That is walking humbly. Ah, it's so cool. And for Antoinette's job interview, Lord, may it go well. Let the right job be there for her. And if this is your will for it, please make it easy and make it happen. And uh, Jeremy said, um, please pray that my family made it home safe from the west side safely. Oh gosh, yeah, that'd be good. Please bring Sherry and the kids home. Assuming it's Sherry and the kids. Please bring them home safely, Dad. Please keep their vehicle safe and all that. For the rest of us, Lord, in your timing and your will, may we gather back together here. But help us to make the most of the time that we have. To make the most of these times while we're isolated. May it cause us to pray more. May it lead us to seek your face more. May it allow us the opportunity to set aside the busy schedule, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Guys, ah, it's so good to be with you again on a Monday. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. It's going to be a, a, a good message this Sunday. Mark's last Sunday was, woo, woo, I was on fire, man. And I got to be there watching it while it was recorded. And then I watched it again on Sunday, and it was just like hearing it all over again. There were new things jumping out. I'm like, this is so good. And then Jason Strickland's preaching this Sunday. That's going to be awesome. So I hope you guys stay safe. Pray for our community, not just groups within our community. I want to challenge you to pray for our community as a whole and that each of us would reflect the love of Jesus and the transforming power of God in a very, very hurting world. For some of those, this is as good as it's going to get. All right. Ah, I agree, Jackie. Thankful for a C3. Oh, you're a sweetheart, Jackie. Thank you. If you guys don't know Jackie, she's our children's director. She's awesome. She's like the best thing to happen to those kids. Seriously. After like... No. After nothing. She's awesome. Okay, guys. I love you. And I will see you next Monday. Take care.